Heaven's California Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to a brand new video and today, as requested, there was a part one yesterday's video and it was a decision to continue Slime Rancher for the filling in when we're not playing, uh, covering FIFA 18 news or when FIFA 18 comes out. Or do we go back to FIFA 17, maybe do a quick career mode or just chill on Ultimate Team. And you guys did vote for the Ultimate Team. When I checked it this morning, it was four votes for um, Ultimate Tier FIFA. Um, one vote for Slime Rancher. For the one person who wants the Slime Rancher, you've been outvoted. <laughs> but anyway, we are back today. And today we are going to be looking at and reacting to the transfer market. I've spent here two hours, sat here, doing all the transfers for the top European teams and the Premier League teams. Um, we're also going to be predicting our top six and our bottom three in the Premier League as well. Um, and top goal scorer and... Uh, who's going to win the Golden Glove. And uh, we're not going to do European uh, stuff yet because, you know, you, you can't guarantee what's going to happen there. But we're going to start off with Arsenal and Arsenal Football Club. We're relatively quiet. They have made a couple of departures. Obviously, Chamberlain has left. Gibbs has left. Chesney has left. Their Perez is on loan. Campbell's on loan. Uh, Jenkinson's on loan as well and they've only made two signings obviously Lacazette and they have gone in and got themselves Kalasinac as well but the one thing that confuses me was yesterday a couple of days ago before the transfer window ended um, Arsenal fans were told by the board that they had no money and they weren't they couldn't sign any more players even though they were in profit and, you know, they might finish fifth last season, might still get some money from fifth place. And where's all that money gone? They've got season tickets and stuff. But then yesterday, they were told, we were told that Arsenal were putting a 90 million bid in for Lamar, who rejected it. Monaco said no. And, you know what, I can't blame Lamar, to be honest. You know, there's something inevitably wrong with the club, whether that's behind the closed doors, whether that's Arsene Wenger. Maybe the players aren't good enough. I mean, you're looking at their first page. They got an 89 rate. They got 88. You know, the, the team is there. It's just that they get injured a lot. You know, Arsenal players get injured. Has anyone ever looked into that? You know, no other clubs had as many injuries as Arsenal have um, in the last few years. So you're looking at that and you're wondering, is anything going on? I know you, people are watching Arsenal fan TV, so, you know, as a joke. But I actually go on there to listen to people. And, you know, they're saying Keswick, Chips Keswick is a liar, saying there's going to be change, nothing's changed. And you've got Arsene Wenger, who some people are now saying is trying to sabotage the club, ready for the next manager to come in. And you're saying that Kroenke is the problem, not giving the money, this is just his little bit on the side. If things go wrong, you can dip into Arsenal and take some money. You know, the man's just gone and brought a, a romp the size of Birmingham, I think, in, the, um, in America. And that's quite a lot of land. So, I don't know what's going on there behind closed doors. You know, it was funny. Now, it's kind of concerning. You know, a top club in England that's having this issue. You know, you'd expect Arsenal with a team like this to go into that Europa League and win it, just like United did last season. And I don't think they will. I'm going to be honest. I don't think they will. But Arsenal, you know, they've had a pretty poor transfer window. They brought in Lacazette. They're not starting him. They're starting players out of position. They're playing three at the back. They're playing Montreal at centre-back, you know, I could go on all day. If you guys would like to see a little bit of a, an insight against Arsenal, remember to leave a like down below and comment down below as well. I need to think of a, a poll as well. Um, I don't know. We'll do it at the end. Actually, no, we'll do it now. Who do you think is going to win the Prem? You know, we'll put in the top six teams because it's probably going to be one of them, let's be honest. So we'll do a, a, a poll. It'll be up in this corner with me, uh, probably up here, and I coming up just about now. I have to remember... How uh, so it's about four minutes in about four minutes in we'll have a poll up here uh, it, will, it should flash across if not it will just be an eye up here um, whether you're on your PC or whether you're on your phone or your tablet it'll be where my finger is around about now up here somewhere there'll be an eye and you can go and check out the latest video the latest playlist and the poll for that video as well but moving on we are moving on to Bournemouth they have brought in Begovic they brought in Defoe, they bought Ake from Chelsea. Who have they got rid of? No one 
too important, really. You know, Bournemouth are just going to sit mid-table, I think. I don't think they're in trouble, but I don't think they'll be anywhere near the top half of the the Premier League, really. I don't think they'll be doing that. So I, I think they'll be fine. Maybe lower half of the table, but not relegation. I don't think Bournemouth will be relegated this season. Moving on, we've got Burnley. And Burnley have had a pretty promising start to the season. They brought in Court. They lost Gray. But they brought in, you know, they got Waters here. They've got Chris Wood. Will we see Burnley getting relegated? It'll be, I think they'll be down there. But whether they'll be relegated or not, I don't know. I mean, I think my 20th and 19th spot already taken up. I'm thinking that'll be Brighton and Huddersfield. I don't know what way round. That 18th is going to be close. I think Burnley be in there for 18th. But I think they might just survive. Newcastle will be down there too. But we'll move on to that when we get to them. You know, I think Palace might be going down. You know, they haven't been good so far. But uh, Chelsea. Interesting with Chelsea. Because they haven't got a great squad depth. That is a lot of the, the pundits problem with Chelsea this season. They didn't really strengthen all they've done is replaced. They've got Costa here. And the whole Costa situation was ridiculous. You know, he sat in Brazil. Um, he sat over in Brazil. He's still earning money. The way they treat Costa, okay, yes, it wasn't it wasn't right. You know, getting a text from manager, yeah, we're not we no we don't want you next season. I don't know why they'd say that. You know, he's only 27, 28 now. Still in his prime, he's still got three or four years of being a top in that top quality striker and he wanted to go to Atletico Atletico can't buy him yet until January so he's just going to be sat over in Brazil Chelsea haven't done anything about it they've been dealing with his agent they didn't send anyone over to Brazil to go and see him so I'm not too sure what's going on there I'm going to be honest it doesn't look good for Chelsea really um, you know they've, they've signed Drinkwater they've they've still got Hazard he'll be coming back soon they've got Courtois they've got Fabregas, they got William, they've got quality players, they've signed Morata, you know, the whole Morata-Lukaku thing, that was a bit interesting, you know, Chelsea originally wanted Lukaku, Manchester United wanted Morata, United went in, got Lukaku first, Chelsea then, you know, probably went, well, you know what, if he's good enough for United, he's good enough for us, and they brought him in, they brought in Zappa Costa, I'm not really sure why, you know, they brought in Bakayoko as kind of a replacement for Matic. I really don't know why they let how that happened either. You know, cracking signing for Manchester United there. Um, very, very good player for Chelsea last season. So I don't know how the hell that's happened. Alonso's been good at the start of this season. And I don't know. I, I think Chelsea will be in their title race. But whether they'll win it or not, I don't know. We'll do that at the end of the video. Um, moving on to Crystal Palace, haven't been great so far, they've got that new manager, Deboa, I think his name is, they brought in Sacco, that's really it really isn't it, you're looking at this team, you're thinking, it shouldn't go down, but I think they'll be there, they're on that fringe of maybe 16th, 17th, 18th, you know, I think 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, uh, there's always a, a few clubs that will be fighting for that 18th. There's always one or two clubs for me that will always be destined to go down. And unfortunately, I think that will be Brighton and Huddersfield this time around. But I think Crystal Palace will be there near that relegation zone as they were last season. Can they turn it around? I don't know. But moving on to Everton. And Everton have had... You know what? I'd be tempted to say Everton have done the best from this transfer window. They've had a cracking window. You're looking at the players they brought in. They brought in Sigurdsson, a cracking player in the Prem. Premier League quality there, attacking midfield. They brought in Waza, Win Hune. You know, he's again a cracking player. He's on a two-year deal. He'll be cracking for Everton, I think. He's had a promising start. Not good enough for United at the moment, unfortunately. He did drop out of the team really after David Moyes. You know, Louis van Gaal was playing him in centre midfield. And it's nice to see him back at Everton. I think he'll be a cracking player there. Help him along. Barkley, last night apparently, uh, rejected a move to Chelsea. But now they've said that Everton have claimed that they haven't. Barkley never had a medical there. So I don't know what the hell is going on there. Um, you're looking here. They've got Klaassen here. You're looking at their depth. And they've got very good depth. 
Uh, they've got Class in there. They've brought in Keane. They've still got Balassi. He's injured, though. They've brought in Sandro. They've brought in Pickford. You know, I think if Arsenal aren't careful, I think Everton could challenge for top six. Um, you know, if Arsenal don't pick up, I don't know. Maybe they could be challenging Arsenal for that sixth spot. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I think I don't think Arsenal will get top four this season, though. Obviously, Hull not in the Premier League anymore. Moving to Leicester. Let their two midfielders go that pretty much carried their midfield through that title winning season two years, uh, two seasons ago. They've got Richard Water and Kante now. They brought in Ibora. They've got... I can't remember if they brought Dragovic. They might have brought in Dragovic. I can't remember, really. You know, they haven't been too busy. That's what I'm saying. They haven't been too busy, Leicester. They've only... This connect is really annoying. Stop listening. There we go. Um, they haven't been too busy. They've got rid of... They brought in Iron Atcher, haven't they? Did they? Yeah, they did bring in Iron Nacho as well. Um, I don't know. It'll probably be mid-table. They won't be... I don't think they'll go down. But I don't think they'll be anywhere near the top half. They'll be like 11th, 12th in that... In that mid-table region, Liverpool now. Liverpool have had... You know what? They haven't been very good in this chance window, I'm going to be honest. They brought in Salah, cracking player. But I was actually pretty upset with Liverpool, the way they've handled the whole Coutinho saga. You're looking at a player now who is quite inevitably... You know, a lot of young Brazilians, they want to go and play for Barca. And this kid, he's 24. So 25 now. He gets around the pitch. And this man, you know, we really should have been seeing him in a Barcelona shirt. You know, a Barcelona, I think they've offered them over 100 million and they just rejected it because they had no one to replace him with. That's probably why. But he's not playing at the moment and they're still playing fine. I don't know what his contract situation is. I don't know whether he's out of contract yet. Um, you know, it's kind of similar to the whole Sanchez situation with Arsenal. I didn't really agree with how they've done deal dealt with that. You know, I don't think Manchester City are very happy because the whole idea was if Sanchez was to leave the to City, City was going to be the player the club he was going to for around fifty five to sixty million. But that deal would only go through if they signed Lamar. That didn't go through, and now they've got Alexis Sanchez who isn't happy. And unless they sell him in January. They're going to get nothing for him. Because that man isn't going to sign a new contract. And there's a lot of players that are contract this season at Arsenal. Um, and I think a lot of them... I don't think a lot of them will be signing a new contract. And I think Wenger's going to have a big task. And I think the fans, you know, they're not happy. We well, can see that. Liverpool fans are happy because they've kept Coutinho. But I don't agree with why they've done it. I don't agree with it. I think he should be in a Barca shirt right now. I'm going to be honest. But I didn't allow for him to go. And they didn't think he was going to want to go. You know, it'd be interesting if he comes back from this back injury he's got. Um, to see whether or not he does come back. But we have got, you know, they've signed Salah. They've brought in the Oxley chamberlain Hopefully they use him right. They've also brought in that new left-back, haven't they? Uh, Andy Robertson, Andrew Robertson. But, you know, Liverpool, uh, they, I don't think they'll challenge for... Mm, I think their defence will let them down this season. If they had bought that Virgil van Dijk in, I think they may have been challenging for the title. But I think defence will let them down. You can't really judge them against the Arsenal game because Arsenal were poor that game. You know, I don't agree with them playing at three at the back. But, you know, I'm not an Arsenal fan and I can't criticise too much. But moving on to the club that could very well possibly win the league this season. Um, you know, a lot of pundits were saying it is... If they don't win it this season, then or at least very highly challenged for it, then it's all Pep's fault. And I would agree. They've got the tool. They've got the resources now. You're looking at the players. He's looked at his right uh, uh, fullbacks and he's gone. You know what? I think we need some new ones. And he's 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 signed, got some new ones in, hasn't he? He's got in. Uh, he's brought in Bernardo Silva. And we see him debut. I don't know. You're looking at this top page here and you're looking at how many attacking players they've got. 
David Silva, De Bruyne, Aguero, uh, Gundogan. He might be coming. He should be back soon. You're looking at Bernardo Silva. You're looking at Sterling. You're looking at their centre halves. You've got Company. You've got Otamendi. You've got Edison now. Um, you know, where is Bravo? I mean, he's in the 82 rated now. Wow. Okay. You thought he's brought in Walker. He's got Sane there. He's an 82 rated now. He's got a Zeus, you know, he's got he's got a lot of depth and I don't see why he shouldn't win. He should be in for a very good um, season, I think. I don't think Zinchenko's there anymore, but they've got some good youngsters here. You know, I think they've kept on to the Mangara. they got Stone, they've got Fernandinho, they got Champions League. They should be challenging in both, I'm going to be honest. But we'll see, but so should their other... So should the other Manchester club. Manchester United this season. A lot of people have said. To me and Pundits. This is their year. And we should have a very, very good crack at it this season. You're looking at this team. You've got best keeper in the world. League slash world. With Neuer up there. The two best in the world there. You've got Pogba. He's coming through. They've kept on Zlatan. I need to put him back in the team, actually. Um, even though he's not technically here at the moment. So, he's not officially. He's, a, he's under contract for another year. I don't want to see him coming in, pushing Lukaku out. I want to see him used as more of a squad player. I think he is under no obligation that he's going to be, a, be able to play every weekend. You know, he's going to help if he comes back at Christmas because that's Champions League time. He's still quality to play enough in the Champions League. He can play in the league. He can play in FA Cup matches, League Cup matches. I, I think he's good. I think they've been very good this season. We've got Matic. He's doing a cracking job. You know, he's a cracking player. Um, you've got, you've also got Lindelof when we see him. You know, he can play cup games. We've got squad. We've got enough, enough depth this season to be challenging in every cup. So that's Champions League, FA Cup. League Cup and the Premier League. Gosh, it's half 12 already. Damn straight. Okay, we've got Southampton there. Moving swiftly on. Mid-table for Southampton for me. You know, don't think they'll be pushing that top seven. Uh, they might get seven. Mm, no. I think top seven will be them top six in Everton. I don't see anything else happening. They might be eighth, ninth. You know, nothing too special. They haven't really got rid of anyone to... Big, they haven't really brought anyone in that's very big, so they brought in Lemina from a uh, uh, Juventus actually, but um, that's about it. Spurs, uh, kind of quiet, you know, they've sold Walker, they've got a replacement, Sal Jaria. He's cracking, I like him, I like Sal Jaria. Uh, shame things didn't work out for him in Paris, I'm not too sure it went on. Um, and they've also brought in this guy, uh, Davison Sanchez from Ajax. Um, not too sure he's worth the 42 million, but you know, you're looking at the age, he's 21. And you're sat there and you're looking and you're, you know, he's 6 foot 2. Do they need cover there? Possibly. They got rid of Wimmer, Kevin Wimmer. So they did need some cover there. You know, I wasn't really expecting much from centre midfield upwards because they've got that sorted already. We've seen that Spurs can attack and I think Lamella will be back soon as well. But will they be getting that top four? It'd be hard for them. It'd be hard. I wouldn't have put them there, but... Um, but yeah, we'll see. Stoke City. They've had... They've done alright. They've got a decent team. I think Stoke will be in the top half of that table. If things go okay. They've got Kurt Seaman on loan. They've got Hesse on loan. They've got Chupo Moteng. Uh, he's 27. So he's still young enough to be playing each week. Uh, they've got a decent team there. Again, nothing too much to say about Stoke, really. Um, moving on. We have got... I believe it'd be Swansea next, right? Uh, yeah, Swansea. Swansea have lost their main man. They have lost... Um, they've lost... Sorry about that, just had a something on the phone, might have been important. But there, they've got, they've lost Sigurdsson, they've brought back Boney, they've got Renato Sanchez, it'd be good to see him in the league. Um, you know, cracking player when he was at um, 
Where was he? Was it Benfica or was it Paul? Uh, was it? I think it might have been Benfica, wasn't it? Was it? It was either Benfica or it was. Ah, uh, what are they called? How can I forget? Sporting, Sporting. Uh, it was that. It was that. I think he might be at Benfica, and he did all right. He moved to Bayern. You know, he's a he's a good lad, but he's not big enough for Bayern. I think they should have loaned him out last season. Um, but you know, it will be it be good. He's a good ultimate team player as well. We can have him in the Premier League now as well. That's a oh, that's cracking. That was. He was really expensive at the start of this uh, FIFA though, wasn't he? Uh, moving on to Watford. Sit up a bit now. A bit. Bit more or less laid back on the chair, creaking away because it's well, just gets a lot of use, I suppose. Um, what have Watford done? Not much, you know. They brought in Gray. That's about it. Watford. I don't think they'll be in trouble. They might be down in that pack. They might be down in the pack. They might be. But uh. You know, I'm just basing this on form at the moment. You know, Huddersfield at the moment, they're second in the league. But I think things will go downhill. We've got West Brom here. They'll be in that top ten again. They've got Krakowiak on loan. God knows how that's gone through. You know, he's, he was, I think he's a cracking player, um, Krakowiak. They brought in um, uh, Jay Rodriguez. they got Kieran Gibbs. You know, they got a solid team. And Tony Pulis, he did well last season with West Brom. I think they'll be like ninth, tenth. That mid-table. Mid-table teams, you know, I don't really care about. Um, no one really bothers about them. Then we got West Ham. A four-and-a-half-star team. And it hasn't been going well for them, has it? There's something about it. Whether it's Slavon, whether it's the team morale. They haven't played at home yet. And for me, you know, their squad's very... They haven't got many players here. Um, their squad's very small, West Ham. And it would worry me. And I think they're going to be down there this season. At the moment, based on this form, they're going to be down there. And I think they might get relegated. And I don't know how. They're going to have Joe Hart. They're going to have Hernandez. They've got Nautovic, Bonte, Antonio, uh, Bonner, Lanzini, Ayu, Reed, Zaba. And they, if it clicks, they'll be fine. If it doesn't, they'll be down there. Um, you have to think about that bottom and bottom. But we're moving on now to the other three new teams that have arrived. We've got Brighton. They've spent quite a bit of money. They've got uh, they've brought in Davy Proper, Mason Ryan, uh, Shaletto from Sporting, uh, Izquierdo from Bruges. They've brought in Crow on loan. They've got Grob. I think that's how you pronounce it. They've got Nocket. Anyone else? They brought in not you know I follow I follow Brighton. Oh, they got uh, they got Asai Brown as well. The thing that worries me with Brighton is, uh, the thing that would say, highlight to me, they're not going to stay up, is lack of pace. They've got this Izquierdo, and he's a quick guy, but other than that, you know, the Championship is a lot slower than the Premier League, and this was their star man, Anthony Nocker, and you know, he, he's alright, he's pretty fast, but not, not super, super quick, and they will struggle, I think, they will struggle. Um, I can very much see him being relegated as I can Huddersfield because you know unless Huddersfield do a, a mad a madness again I just don't think they have the squad depth you know they got some good players in there they got Mooney they got Depotois they got Mui they've got Rob Green just, Rob Green must be getting on a bit mustn't he thirty six eh, a couple of years left in him then um yeah I I can see Huddersfield going down. I think they'll be 19th, though. I think Brighton, unfortunately, will be last. You know, Brighton got a lovely stadium. And if I had the money, you know what? If Brighton stayed up, you know, it's a lot easier for me to go and see Brighton than it is a Brighton Man United, rather, as a Brighton fan, rather than going up to Manchester and going to see Man United. You know, it's a long way from here. Um, you know, nothing stops you doing that. I mean, away games, you, you find it hard to get tickets. Because um, they're, they're normally going out to season ticket holders and uh, higher, higher people in the club. But we've got last but least, not least, in Premier League, that is. We've got Newcastle. I think they'll be down there in relegation, um, in the relegation battle. What's this? We've got Sky Sports. Oh, hang on a minute, guys. We've got some cracking news here. 
Why Mooney has been arrested on suspicion of drink driving. That's Sky Sports come through there as well. And Leicester are still waiting to hear whether Adrian Silver signing has gone through after requesting two out and like extension to transfer deadline. I'm not sure that was allowed, but uh, it, it must have. Uh, we'll see if that goes through. I mean, it still won't put them into top four or anything, but there might be a tenth or something. Uh, Newcastle, uh, um, I think they might go down. Um, you know, I think I'd put the three promoted teams as the three relegated teams. I'm going to be honest. But uh, we're moving on now. We're moving on to top European teams. For me, there's six top European teams outside of England. Uh, we're going to be looking at Monaco first. They have lost a lot of their firepower. Mbappe, gone. Not forever. He's just gone. Silva, gone. They've brought in Bauda Dial. They've still got Falcao. I like Bauda Dial. I've seen him play for Lazio a few times. He looks good. They've still got Saïd Ibe. They've still got Lamar. They've got Tilly Mans. I don't think they'll win the league. I think the league will be back to PSG. How will they do in the Champions League? They'll get out of their group. What they'll do from there, I do not know. But we're looking at Paris. And Paris... Oh, got a whopping team, I'm going to be honest. You know, they brought in Neymar. £200 million pounds pretty much for this guy. And, you know, it's inevitable. This guy's going to be taking over at being the world's best after Messi and Ronaldo. You know, for me, personally, Ronaldo is the better player than Messi. He worked his way to being best. You know, you can thank Alex Ferguson for that. You know, coming to the Premier League. He's proved he can do it in the Premier League. Uh, Messi hasn't. He's just been a very lucky boy and the exceptional talent to be as good as he is today. But Neymar, you know, I think it was Barcelona. They filed a dispute against Paris for this signing. You know, there's nothing they can do. Paris have an extremely good amount of money. And they've got him in. You know, that's the only... They have lost a midfielder, actually. They've lost uh, Matuidi, haven't they? They've lost him to uh, Juventus. Juventus. But they've also... There he is, the boy. Mbappé. they got this guy as well, Guedes. I think he's a cracking pleur as well. I've seen him play a few times. That's really it for Paris, though, isn't it? There's no one really else of any good significance. Uh, moving on to Germany. We're looking at Bayern. Again, a whopping team. They've got Neuer, they've got Lewandowski, they've got Boateng, Hummels, I believe. They've got Rodriguez on a two-year loan, I think. They've still got Robin, they've still got Vidal, they've got Muller, Ribéry, Thiago. they bought in Tolisso, they bought in, they've signed Coman. Um, they bought in Rudy, Siula. So I think they'll be very good in Europe this year. Uh, unfortunately, no Arsenal to beat, but I think they'll be giving some tubes to rub their money. Um, Dortmund, they lost them Ray Moore. They still got Royce and Aubameyang. I never really knew Aubameyang was 27. Um, they brought in Toprak. They brought in Dahu. They don't really sold anyone of, apart from Usman Dembele. Obviously, he's gone to Barcelona. Which is a, I think that was an extreme price tag for Usman Dembele. Um, ridiculous amount of money um, for what he is, to be honest. He's only had a year at Dortmund. Has he earned that price tag? Not for me. Uh, we're going to Italy. And what teams did we do in Italy? We looked at... I didn't really look at Roma. Because, you know... I think the only two teams I've really looked at here are Juventus and Milan. So we'll go and have a look at them. We're looking at Juventus, uh, or Juventus, uh, they've got in Matuidi, that's what, they were very quiet, because they didn't really need much, maybe, just maybe, they did lose uh, Benucci, didn't they, they still got Chiellini, they still got Bajagli, and they, did they keep Benicia, they might have done, I can't remember, um, they got, they got, you know, they still got a cracking team. You know, you're looking at that, you're looking at that, you think that team could go places. A thinner squad than a lot of teams, but still cracking, cracking players, you know. Buffon, this will probably be his last season. Can he win that 
prestigious Champions League trophy this season. They'll give it a new push. They had a rebrand of the badge as well. Not sure I like that. You know, it's a sort of nice, like, Ugh, what's wrong with the other one? But I'm looking at Milan here. Milan, they have spent, I believe they've spent, I was looking at their net spend. It's minus 147 million or something. The boy Bonucci, Masaccio, Biglia, um, uh, Rodriguez. They brought in Silva. They have brought in Honda's not there anymore, is he? He's at Japanese club, I think. You know they, that. Regardless, they brought in a load of players. I want to see Milan. Yeah, we want to see Milan. You know, quality. Both Milan teams back up there at the top of Italian football. Maybe we'll see it this season. Keep an eye out. Aren't AC Milan? I think they're in the Europa League, are they not? Um, it'd be interesting if they are in there to see that. You know, you got Roma. I think the only they've got Kolarov wherever he is. Did I transfer him? Yeah, I did. He's not a centre back though. He's a left back. But I can't really, you know, I don't really follow Italian football, so I don't really, you know, the only Italian team I really follow is, um, of course, uh, Juventus. But Spain, you know, we're looking at Atletico Madrid, and they, they couldn't bring anyone in. They've been banned because of, I think it was like tax or something. They couldn't make any signings. Um, you know, they probably would have had Costa. But they can't have him because he's not there. He, uh, they they can't sign anyone just yet. Um, have they got rid of anyone? No, they weren't going to sell out of anyone. Um, I don't think they'll get any further than they might cause an upset in the Champions League, but I don't I don't see it personally. I don't know where that goalkeeper is. Where's O Black? Hang on. Oh, there he is. It wasn't shown him before, was it? I can't remember. But, obviously, moving to the big boys of European football, Barcelona and Real Madrid. Barcelona, I think they panic bought Usman Dembele. Um, I really do. And I hope that we still see Barcelona being dominant. I don't want to see a drop-off. They brought in Delafoy, they brought in Usman Dembele. You know, the kid's good. I'll give him that. The kid's good. His stat's not the best, though, is he? Is he really a suitable replacement for Neymar? He will be. You know, we're forgetting he's uh, five years younger than Neymar. And, you know, he's got that five-star week for five-star skills. He'll be... He'll be worth... I think he'll be, like, 82, 83. It'll still be worth a lot. Oh, FIFA, that is, because he's... A, oh, my God. Why am I so tired? I went to bed pretty early last night as well. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, he can use both feet. It'll be worth quite a bit in FIFA, I think, even if he's 82 83 rated, just because he plays for Barcelona. What Barcelona player isn't worth a crap ton of money that's rare and that over 80 rated? None of them. Um, but then we're moving on to our final team, then we'll do the uh, predictions. We're looking at Real Madrid, Real Madrid. They are the team to beat for me. And they got Ronaldo. They've got Bale, they've got Modric, they've got Ramos, Kroos, Benzema, Bamathelo, Misco, Navas, Casimiro, uh, Varan, Dani Carvajal, Asensio, this guy. Fucking pleur. You know, he's fucking pleur. He's been banging for Real Madrid so far. I want to see this kid go places. You know, this kid is going to be up there in the top, top bracket. Of players in a couple of years' time, if he stirs at Real Madrid, it'd be cracking. You know, Real Madrid will be laughing. And they're laughing at they're laughing at Barcelona anyway, because you know Barcelona have had to spend over a hundred million on their team, and Real Madrid have had to spend nothing because their players don't leave Real Madrid. And Neymar wanted to leave. I don't know if Neymar wanted to leave, but he did. But anyway, we're going to be going to predictions now. Predictions for. Premier League. In first, I am purely based on some form, and I'm not putting it because I'm a Manchester United player. You know, uh, Manchester United player. No, nah, Manchester United supporter. You know, I'm. 
just to the quality we've seen at the moment, Manchester United haven't been challenged by a top team yet. But I would go, it's going to be between these two Manchester clubs, and I think United will pick it, just because they have a bit more squad depth. And I think it'll be closely followed by City. Maybe three or four points behind will be Chelsea. Then behind them, I am going to pop in... I'll go for Liverpool, then we'll have Spurs, then we'll have Arsenal, then I'll put in Everton. That's my top seven. Bottom three, unfortunately, I'm going to go for Brian, Huddersfield and Newcastle in that order, 20th, 19th, 18th. Um, clean sheets, I'm going to have to go for David De Gea so far. And top goal scorer... Um... For me, it's between Kane and Lukaku. And you know what? I think it will go to Kane. I think Kane will get it just because Spurs solely rely on... Oh, Jesus. Facebook thing in. I think Spurs rely on Kane more than United rely on Lukaku. So that's why. Oh, for God's sake. Let me check this quickly. Now my phone's ringing. Um, so we're going to have to end it here. Thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, remember to leave a like. And uh, comment down below. Who do you think will win the title? Shut up, phone. Um, subscribe if you're new around here. Turn the notifications on. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.